Thank you for joining me for this video. I am Mr. Rish. I hope all of you are doing well. Let's in this video look at a specific definite integral question. We will utilize two different routes to integrate this. We have the trigonometric route which most students will lean towards and then there's also that hyperbolic particularly the inverse hyperbolic route available. When you are looking at this you are thinking about this. Students are generally thinking about this because they will lean towards that trigonometric route. So let's start with that. A here is equal to 1, x is equal to tan theta, dx is equal to secant square theta d theta and then theta 1 and theta 2 with regards to 0 and 1 and this. Inverse tan of 0, 0. Inverse tan of 1, pi over 4. Bring in your substitution. dx is a secant square theta d theta. Here in the denominator you'll have a 1 plus tan square theta. You know this right here is trigonometric identity equal to secant square theta. When you do the root of that, you're going to get a secant theta. You'll have a secant square theta d theta divided by secant theta. And you know when you simplify this, you're having a 0 to pi over 4 secant theta and d theta. And the antiderivative is not hard. Natural log secant theta plus tan theta. We're looking at everything from 0 and pi over 4. Put pi over 4 first and put 0 in places of theta and then the difference of the two. Natural log secant and theta with the pi over 4 will be natural log root 2 plus 1. That's coming here from the upper limit. Secant of pi over 4 is a root 2. Tan of pi over 4 is a 1. Minus natural log secant of 0 is a 1. Tan of 0 is a 0. That part here will 0 out. You'll have a natural log root 2 plus 1. Let's get a calculator value. Root 2 plus 1 natural log 0.88137. That's my end result using here the typical trigonometric route which most students lean towards. This same definite integral can be done very quickly using an inverse hyperbolic route and I'll show you. The trigonometric substitution route is relatively long. Understand and recognize that if you're doing the derivative of this inverse hyperbolic sign, your end result in terms of the derivative is exactly the integrand you're seeing over here. And how is that? Well, it's like this. Y is equal to your inverse hyperbolic sine x. You saw for x, you push it on the other side. You're looking at the hyperbolic sine of y. You do the implicit differentiation of this. You'll have cosine hy dy over dx is equal to 1. So for dy over dx is equal to 1 over hyperbolic cosine y. Think about this very important identity hyperbolic cosine square y or x, what are the variable might be minus the hyperbolic sine square y or x is always equal to 1. A very important identity. Solve for hyperbolic cosine. You'll have here a 1 plus hyperbolic sine square and then root. Bring that right here. It's 1 over root 1 plus sine h square y. Sine h y is equal to x. Sine h square y is equal to x square. Bring that in. 1 over root 1 plus x square. That's exactly what we're looking at. The derivative here is the integrand and the integrand's antiderivative therefore must be this. And that's what you will do. You'll do the antiderivative which is your inverse hyperbolic sine, upper limit 1, lower limit 0. The lower limit here is meaningless but the upper limit is what will give you your answer. Bring out your calculator, put 1, shift hyperbolic sine 0 0.88137 and you're done. Your antiderivative with the upper limit 0.88137 confirms the results that you saw right here using trigonometric substitution route. The inverse hyperbolic route is very fast but you have to recognize this derivative identity which I have for you right here. That's it. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.